So I'm sure you've watched all our other videos that kind of lay out a lot of the high level issues that people in the restaurant industry face when setting up their legal docs and raising money, when incentivizing employees. Another issue that always comes up, or not always, but a lot of times comes up, is the role of property in the business. So in many cases, our clients uh, in the past have, have either gotten the opportunity to buy the location that they're in, or they buy the location or are in the process of buying a location at the time they're setting up their business. So in, in this can really impact kind of the size of the, the business and the attractiveness to investors. And I'll give you some examples. So in, in some cases, you know, the, the founding group finds a property that it wants to purchase. It goes ahead and buys that property and then it starts trying to raise money. Well, the issue becomes, do you raise money into the owner, like the equity, the entity that owns the property, or do you raise money into the restaurant? And quite frankly, it can depend. Uh, in general, property ownership for certain size deals, like so if a, a group is trying to raise a million dollars or more, for example, to do build out, initial marketing, and, and otherwise kind of make the restaurant a success, if they're new to the restaurant business or industry, Real estate may be looked at as a key component of the transaction to the investors from the sense of maybe ensuring that their downsides protected because there's, you know, kind of long-term value in real estate and the restaurant game is very risky. So we see lots of deals where the investor group asks specifically, does the founding group own the, uh, the land or the building in which it's in? What's the plan? What are the use of funds? Oh, it's for purchasing property or building out property. And you'll find that you know, almost invariably the investors will want to invest in either the entity that owns the property as the operating restaurant, or they'll want to invest in, you know, a holding company uh, that might, you know, have the restaurant underneath it and the property underneath it in a separate LLC. But either way, the complexities of that part, you'll have to deal with, um, with somebody like me or your accountants or others. But I would say when real estate is a feature of the deal, it oftentimes is associated in our experience with the ability of the founding group to raise more capital than when there is no property ownership involved. There are lots of ways to finance the acquisition of the property. Um, there may be you know, bank loans or SBA loans to acquire the property. You may be able to raise the money in that case for just the operations and things like that. So there's lots of ways to kind of structure the overall deal and figure it out. But more often than not, in our experience, property ownership actually helps the founding team kind of own. I think there is an inherent sort of um, issue that investors sometimes will see if the founding group only owns the building or the, or the property and the investors are only investing in the operating business because there's so much risk with the operating business compared to the ownership of the building. Um, and there's kind of a conflict of interest, right? You're, you're running a restaurant that's paying you a lease. People will want to make sure that's fair. Uh, market. They'll also kind of want to make sure it's probably not above the note of the, the mortgage associated with the property unless, you know, the founding group has paid for all the build out and stuff like that. So again, every case is a little bit unique, but um, you should definitely talk to somebody about how to leverage the real estate as part of your fundraising um, ability in a case where that's an option. In other cases, you may come into the opportunity to buy the property or building. Now there's a bunch of legal issues that you kind of need to work through if that happens. So if you start off leasing the, the location, your restaurant's doing it really well, the owner says, I'll sell it to you. Um, if you have other like owners, like investors or employees or other key people, you know, you as the sole owner need to be aware of certain conflicts and deal with them appropriately under the legal framework that exists, you know, with fiduciary duties and things like that. Um, secondly, you'll have to kind of deal with some of these investment issues unless you have the cash on hand in the business or, you're, or the business is bankable enough to just kind of buy the property outright, which it might be. But either way, I think you want to talk to someone and figure out the right kind of entity and corporate structure to deal with property ownership versus the operations. In general, uh, most people that are running these don't want the sort of um, entity that's running the restaurant that owns the branding that might have slip and falls and things like that. Most time they're keeping property ownership in the operating company separately uh, or, or owned in separate entities. So hopefully you found this useful. We're just scratching the surface with some of these issues. 
Um, but certainly there are a number of people that can help you with that at our firm. And we are always interested in helping restaurateurs take it to the next level and become one of those well-established iconic brands like we've worked with. And we're always here to help. If you like this, please hit the like button, subscribe, leave us comments, get in touch. But we appreciate you and we hope to hear from you soon. All right. Thanks.